Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And, well, folks, we're going to really get into it today. I mean, as you know, there's, uh, there's all sorts of issues that are sitting with us uh, uh, here at presently. And I think for the good reason, too, because we're discussing issues. And in all due respect, the, the issues that the Zimmerman uh, is found not guilty, that was basically on the, in the Sunday Argonian. That was the front page of the Sunday Argonian. There it is right there. And uh, that was one piece. And then, uh, but the thing that really got me about this whole thing, the other thing, there's a, there's a whole issue of immigration. The immigration issue is still on the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, some have said, well, what about that piece? And then just locally, that's the one that really captured my 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 ears and interest it says racism rears up in longshore standoff that's right here locally in the portland metropolitan area okay and then in all the in all these captures the rationale is that this is what we're talking about we're talking about racism you know when you start thinking about the zimmerman situation that's right we, we, we it's on the table we are talking about racism from a historical standpoint uh, it's it's come through for a number of years but we're still talking and discussing this issue and so the key is that when are we going to be talking to solutions? And maybe we are doing that, but maybe it's not coming up fast enough. We've be, we become so sophisticated today. People are wanting some answers, and, and uh, the divide and conquer is not going to help the situation at all. In all due respect, uh, you know, uh, uh, there, there, there's mixed marriages. Uh, whites and blacks are marrying. Uh, uh, we've got the gay issue aspect of it. They're, they're saying there's civil rights and using some of the issues and whatever. We've got, um, I wanna, in, in the case of, of the Zimmerman and whatever, and 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 Martin, whatever the um, uh, I think about um, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, you know, he's the one that basically put this on the table. And but at the same time, you know, uh, again talking about these issues, he's on MNS NBC right mm -hmm. now at this point in time. Uh, he's got his his national network action program going on. Uh, some of the black radio stations are carrying, if you will. Uh, his uh, his morning shows. He's got a show on MNS, but he also does a morning. And I think that's a good thing, as opposed to in most cases, traditionally, it's just been just music, you know, but we're talking about issues along that line, which we need to do, okay? And uh, the Hispanic community, the Mexican community, they're, they're, they've got their own Spanish shows, too, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And they're doing that thing. I, I would like very much if they had a, a translator there, too, but, but unfortunately, that's just the way they're doing it, see? Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that uh, we're talking about racism. We're talking about race, and and there's nothing wrong with doing that. We need to do that, and so that's what we're going to do in in this hour here. I've got some very notable uh, uh, guests here with me today. Uh, uh, Mr. Williams here, Bob, and Bob, uh, Bob and I, we uh, we go back a ways, but uh, you know you've seen him on the show again. Welcome, Bob. Hey, we're glad to be okay. here, Ruth. And then we got John Sweeney. John, glad John, to be here. John's been here for quite some time. He's he's been on the show <coughs> and whatever. And I always look to him to, to, to talk to him about the whole issue about the issue on on, uh, on guns, you know, and, 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 and whatever. And it was real good. I mean, we haven't been able to get the folks we want yet. Not yet, right, John? But we, we're going to do that. But we're having discussions, okay, which is another issue. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then we got, uh, uh, I, I say, Reverend Cummings, Matt Cummings. Matt, how you doing? Thanks for having good. me. Good. You've seen Matt here before. And uh, he is also uh, involved in, if you will, having discussions to talking about these issues he's gonna he has an upcoming uh, event we're going to discuss that a little bit more as we go along into the show aspect of it but we're going to do we're just going to get right into this piece and and but we're going to start off with bob i mean that, that's all that's the only way to do it. we're going we're to start off with bob right off the bat okay bob which one should i hit should i hit, should i hit the union piece racism rears up and longshore standoff or should i hit the zimmerman thing let's do the zimmerman then we, okay. everybody can contribute yeah, sure. zimmerman was found not guilty you said you followed this whole piece for quite some time aspect of it. Right. What, how did you, how, what was your response to this whole situation? Well, days I'm ago. Gonna go around, I'm going to go around the table. Let's see days ago, we uh, uh talking on the golf course with the fellas who after watching it, and many of us were, uh, we came to the conclusion that this guy was going to be found not guilty. And he was going to be found not guilty because... First off, when did you first hear about the Zimmerman piece? Uh, and from what source? My uh, son and my nephew, uh, 19 and 32. And, and where did they hear where, where did they hear about it? They came in the house 
they, well, my son's friend called him and said, man, did you hear uh, Zimmerman was found not guilty? No, 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 I'm not talking. When did you, free, when did you first hear about the Zimmerman case piece? Oh. Uh, what source? Uh, it was uh, MS, uh, NBC, N, uh, MSNBC. I think it was. Uh, yeah, was, it, was yeah. it, it, it had been there. I mean, the, the, the situation was sitting right. in a dormant situation, mm -hmm. and I think Sharpton was the one that actually brought it up to the table, well, so to speak, back in plain. Well, when I heard about it, uh, Al wasn't involved. It was it was uh, the community that was involved. Community where? Uh, in, in Florida. Uh, that was how, a, how did you get the sword? I'm just asking. I'm trying to get I, I got it off of television. Uh, off of one of the NBC stations. I don't know if it was, I think it was MSNBC. And, and it was a, it was almost a riot or something going on down there because this guy had been killed and the other guy hadn't been arrested uh, or anything okay. at the All time. Right. And then they all sharply okay. got into it. Okay. And that's when I kind of backed up out of it a little okay. bit okay. and uh, just watched. So what's your, what's your response? Cause we're going to go around the room okay. real quick and then we're going to have uh, Him not quick. being found guilty. Uh, it just shows the system, the system at work. Uh, when you go to trial, it's a third party involved. You've got your lawyer, my lawyer, and a third party that's going to make the decision on whether, which one of us they believe. That's the jury. That's the jury. Okay. And so the jury said, hey, uh, the, the prosecutor didn't show with, uh, beyond a, pun, uh, did not show beyond a reasonable doubt that this guy did anything wrong. Okay, that was good. Let's hear some. John, what do you think? Were you, were well, you, uh, where well, did you get the source? First What's time source? I heard about it was, uh, I, I think I was watching the evening news and I was uh, probably watching NBC. And uh, <clears throat> so then kind of followed as it went along. And uh, and the verdict uh, just happened to be listening to television before I headed out. And it was 7 o'clock. Well, the deal was just 10 o'clock there. Those people finished business so they could be home and free for the weekend. Mm -hmm. and so that's how, how that happened. Or was it, and, um, or Saturday night, that was Saturday night. And um, so they had uh, found him not guilty. And uh, I don't think the uh, prosecutor tried very well. Mm -hmm. I heard it a year ago, uh, mm -hmm. and I heard it actually on NPR, on first, first uh, in my car driving. And then I got home and turned on the TV and it was on ABC. CBS, NBC as well. Mm -hmm. I checked it out. And um, in regard to the case itself, I also believe that the prosecuting attorney did, did a horrible uh, presentation for the case. And that's why Zimmerman was found innocent. Mm -hmm. You know, the word racism came up in this whole issue about this piece. Let's go around the room again, too. Do you feel this was a, was, was a race issue? <laughs> From start to finish. Okay. Why? Uh, why is that? Well, he didn't, uh, he got out of his car because there was a black guy walking through the neighborhood. That's race, plain and simple. That's it. Well, the deal is, um, and his, his race one is that they started off that uh, Zimmerman was, was uh, Latino and, and uh, Martin was, was black, and then a little later, why well, they changed it to, to white and black, and, hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> and so as, things went along uh, it just it just got worse mm -hmm. and uh, it just got to the uh, to the jury and and uh, then they weren't uh, I just think the, the case by the pro prosecutor wasn't well developed mm -hmm. he makes a good point about the fact that it was it mm -hmm. was being promoted that it was a Latino and black mm -hmm. right, really was. Yeah. and he is Latino mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, they changed. Then, like, they changed it to white mm -hmm. and I think that's when they were really going out promoting and getting the monies at that time too there was a lot of fundraising and going on mm -hmm. money wise at that time but anyway that was a good point Matt um, adding on to that just a little bit everything you just said I, I agree with and I just want to add both sides got money in regard because yes. of, uh, of race yes. mm -hmm. right. um, Zimmerman got money from people who saw his side mm -hmm. and then of course uh, uh, Travis Martin also got money as well um, I believe that uh, unfortunately um, it's not just that it was about race but it was about stereotyping, which does make race right away. 
uh, his response when he spoke to the police was, I see a young, excuse the expression, punk mm -hmm. with a hood. With a little profanity up front, too. That's mm -hmm. right. And, and all those things gave already the image, not of, not of a, a, a non-person, but specifically the image in America is right away a black, a young mm -hmm. black man. And so it was of race. Mm -hmm. well, one thing there is it's he, one of the comments he says, well, they always get away with it. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. The uh, general population is about 14% black, and the prison population of black, blacks is probably about 25%. Mm -hmm. So the deal is, and I've always said, you know, uh, when you go to court, the darker you are and the poorer you are, the more likely things are going to come up short. Mm -hmm. And for people out there, mm -hmm. you know, the average income is about 50000 a year. And if you go to court and you make less than a hundred thousand dollars a year, you're poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm throwing that something else on the table, in regards to the laws that were on the books in that little town in Florida, stated that uh, it, you know the, the self-defense aspect of it. I thought that was a very interesting one. It, it's it's probably one of I think it's only one of its of its type, if you will, in, in, in the United States. Meaning that uh, if you can, and the point I'm making is that uh, they also made the point about. Uh, a number of black, black on black crimes, shootings and whatever, uh, the person who basically shot the other person used that as their defense mm -hmm. right. and was basically let go. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be said and it's loud and clear. But as long as it was black on black or white on white, that was never an issue. You know, they would just go to trial and get the outcome or whatever. You didn't hear about those cases that many. All I heard was from, from women was saying, but if it was a black and white, you know, that's the Zimmerman, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it really got to the front of the line. Right. Yeah. There's, two, there's two laws in that regard. Castle Doctrine, though, is the deal is you don't have to leave your house. In fact, uh, decades ago, they, a woman killed a guy, and she and he says, well, you could have gone down in the basement and crawled up and gone out. And, and the, her defense attorney says, well, Mrs. So-and-so, how come you couldn't do that? Mm -hmm. She took off her wooden leg and threw it out on the floor and says, this was in the shop. Mm -hmm. And the other one is stand your ground. Mm -hmm. Well, and somebody says, well, y you should run. Well, take a look at us. How many of us could outrun a 20-year-old? Mm -hmm. So that's the two laws. One is the castle doctrine in your house, and not all states have it. And the stand your ground. Stand your ground. Have a, a few states have it, and, and it's kind of a growing thing. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that, uh, you know, people are forgetting, you know, a little courtesy goes a long way. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So where do we go from here? I mean, I mean, I mean where do we go from here? Uh, it's my understanding that Reverend Sharpton made the point about, hey, look, he, he basically said on his air, on the airways and whatever, he uh, uh, at least was brought to trial, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the way it is. And it, it suggested that there should be no rioting and this, that, and that. They made it very clear that he put them on on the tube to make sure that that, that statement was made. So where do we go from here, Bob? Well, I on think this issue? I think. Uh, one of the things, uh, it's going to be very difficult for him, period. I mean, uh, he might, he, they might have found him innocent, but gosh, uh, I would hate to be in his shoes trying to live a normal life. You know, it's going to be very difficult. But for us, we have to understand that we have to begin to take pride in who we are. And stop and and start talking to our kids about killing each other, mm -hmm. because if we don't take pride in our life, why can we? How can we expect someone else to? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that bothers me, is that we have to make use this as an example for our kids to understand why they need to put away the guns and stop taking black life as uh, so uh, trivial. Now, it was said that both families were, were threatened. In fact, uh, uh, Ron Martin's parents didn't attend, if you will, the verdict announcement because uh, they were advised not to because they thought maybe there might have been some issues and whatever. So both were, were threatened. So it, it, the, state, the same statement was made about them from the standpoint that they could be threatened also, too. I'm just... Right. Well, when we get, when we get into the other issue, you'll see uh, that, that uh, bigotry and hatred it doesn't run in just uh, just one way. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it 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 flows it it flows both ways. Mm -hmm. And there and there are people that take take issues and take them to the extreme. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that we should not do is lose another black life over this verdict. Mm -hmm. 
you know, i.e. someone decides that Zimmerman should no longer be here and they kill him and then the police get them and then we lose them and then there's four, there all of a sudden there's three families, uh, four families are a large number of people now going through the grieving process. We have to say that we would stick it to court, uh, the courts rule, the thing to do is to work at changing the law. Mm -hmm. The thing to do is to work at uh, to work at getting our kids to understand how important it is to care for one another. Uh, so my son's just sent me an email and say education isn't the only key. You know, and he he pointed out a few other things which makes which makes a lot of sense. And he's a Republican, <laughs> you know. And don't ask how that happened in my home, but it did. And and, and, and uh, paying the bill. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, he put it on OABA's list, sir. You know. So, but but it's one of those things where we don't know all the facts. Mm -hmm. You know, when I listen to this, the only person that's talking is, is uh, Zimmerman, and so is what he's saying the truth. Not not on the screen. <laughs> uh, when he uh, on the stand, uh, when they took him to the scene, uh, when he gave his uh, his his account of what happened to the police in the beginning, you know, all of that, mm. you know, he's the only one that that was really there that can really express what happened. Yeah, well, he didn't testify. He didn't testify. Wait, no, no. Yeah, but I'm saying that uh, <coughs> all the things that he said, all the things that was in, that was uh, that was uh, contributed to him, and and all of that. Uh, we have to look at. Okay, John. What about uh, should this go now to the? It has been said that possibility the uh, uh, the, the the feds are going to get involved in this process. Should they entertain the, this particular situation? And no. Look at it. And the uh, <clears throat> sometimes they squawk about the fact that the uh, prosecution has one bite at the apple, as whereas the defense can, you know, uh, appeal several times. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that uh, basically if you're on a defense, you're basically using your money to defend against your money. And the fact that the, uh, the prosecution didn't appear to do a good job. And the thing is that uh, uh, it's, it's like some people who get in civil suits you know, against big organizations and they just run you through the system until they run you out of money. So if you allow the uh, government to go against you, they basically could run you out of money. Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm saying that if you make less than $100,000 a year and have to go to court, you are poor mm -hmm. and you're probably going to lose. See? But at the same time, the stand your ground law is something that, like Bob was in. We need to have I, a discussion. I believe, I believe in it because the deal is we could not run a 20-year-old. But the deal is, uh, and he had some, some police training it appears because he was on a neighborhood watch and he um, uh, this may be hard for some people to take but you know uh, Trevon Martin paid a real high price the benefit is he'll probably never be a policeman and he's probably uh, be a Napoleon and terrorize people for 20 to 30 years as a policeman you want to yeah if he, he was to become a policeman so I think his chance to become a policeman is zilch I hope it is zilch and the deal is that uh, I was a security guard and I was in the MPs and and the deal is if I get stopped by a policeman I took a look take a look if it's a little policeman you know you you know you see some of these guys are about five foot five 275 pounds with a three-quarter inch fuse you know you know it's uh, like the deal is um, surviving the encounter you know and because you never know what's going to set these people off and the more that they have in the but now uh, people got guns yeah. Everybody's got a gun. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, most you people don't have, have to a gun. be a big guy anymore. But, yeah. But the deal is that you uh, they have more time that they're having uh, audio and videotapes of these stops, which is good for not only the police, but it's also good for the citizen. And one of the things they need. But when, what about the stand your ground? I mean, going stand to your ground. Federal, and it, federal, should they have a discussion on the federal level? That's, that's the point I'm asking. I think they should do that state by state because the deal is. Not the feds. Not the feds. The deal is this should be state okay. laws and um, All right. That's an opinion. Okay, to, to have that state law so, so that okay. and, and the state and some of the states and Oregon's one of them has uh, preemption so you have uniform laws statewide. It used to be 
there was a checkerboard and you get in trouble. Okay, so you you say states should discuss have discussion. Yeah. And when you're fears. going going across country, there's the uh, Federal uh, Firearms Owners Protection Act. So if it's legal here and it's legal there, you can pass through. But a lot of times you can't stop. So if you're in a state like New Jersey, the deal is you want to gas up before New Jersey and you want to gas up after New Jersey and Pennsylvania, then you gas up before New York and after New York. Yeah, I think we need to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Matt? <laughs> um, uh, well, two things, uh, and, and I'm not trying to tweak yeah. what you've asked, but I do want to say this. I do believe in Florida they do need to really look at stand your ground mm -hmm. because, number one, even the one who put that up felt that Zimmerman kind of overstepped his bound right. on that particular law mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So that does need to be re-looked at in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, so on, in that sense, now you know how I am in regard to government getting, getting involved. Yeah, yeah, I do right. think that there does need to be right. a, a little bit more of an examination by the feds in regard to this particular situation. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, um, I do also agree that each state should be allowed to to have their own law itself. Yeah. You know, there is a feel naturally about the, as far as the, the, the public is concerned that Congress is not doing their job. <laughs> and the and the president is sounding like part of that yeah, because there's a contention this aspect of it and he did make a statement in regards to to this this case right here and so um, maybe that might be of some benefit if you will to have that discussion about the stand your ground piece at that level maybe getting I mean something could come out of the deal but the bottom line is that maybe that's another way of discussing the whole issue of race that's where I'm coming from yeah but the stand well, who, the stand your ground on this sorry Bob yeah. is the fact that. He spotted him, and then he followed him. So, see, the deal is, it wasn't that Trayvon Martin coming come to, come him. Right, to right, begin right, with. Right, right, so right. the deal is, he should not have protection of, of stand yeah. your ground, even That's though it. I believe in stand your ground. Right. Yeah. Because the deal is, That's he it. stepped out. That's you know, it. say, you walk out here and somebody calls you a bunch of names. And you, if they come to you, you should be able to defend yourself. But you mm -hmm. go over there, basically you stuck your jaw out mm -hmm. and you get it. Go ahead. And then there was a sec the second incident where... He says Trayvon came to him as he was going to his car or was in his car. He was protected. He was in his vehicle and the man is outside talking to you. He got out. And was told not to. Well, no, this is after he was told not to follow him. He I know, and, 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 yeah, but he got out of his car to, mm -hmm. to, to engage. Mm -hmm. You know, now I wonder if he would have got out of his car to engage without a gun. And that's oh. where I have a problem with with the gun with the gun law you know uh, it gives you that that, that bolster sense that, that sense, sense of power, of power and yeah. that yeah, needs to be taken yeah, away yeah. 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 just a quick note that's why I was disappointed in the prosecution's case mm -hmm. because if they had actually stuck to the facts they could have addressed that's this it. situation mm -hmm. on you did not follow right procedure on stand your ground right therefore because of that this is why we're calling it manslaughter or murder manslaughter too. right they, they never did it according to the facts that were there in regard to that situation and so that's what was real troubling in regard to the case itself you know you know again on that same uh, I imagine uh, imagine someone let's say let's imagine they say that uh, if all of a sudden he was found guilty Mm-hmm. Now, that means that the prosecutor then would be kind of a, a target, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. In many ways. Uh, a target for what reason? For doing I, his job? For, for allowing, yeah, for basically uh, basically uh, uh, saying that this white guy is guilty as opposed to the black guy. I'm just kind of like throwing yeah, something yeah. out to the table, so to speak. I'm, talking about, the race, way, I'm talking about the race thing. Yeah. Either way, it's going to be... Either way, be how this case was yeah, going, yeah, yeah. this was this was set up for an explosion. Yes, right. yes, yes. And yes. that is what's so disturbing about the yeah, situation. Exactly, and exactly. race and uh, negative race relations mm -hmm. is financially uh, beneficial. beneficial to some. To both sides. Uh, yeah. And so... You know, we have to remember one thing. We don't live in a, social, a socialist world, mm. uh, state, mm. country. This is a capitalist country. Mm. And it's about, how uh, well, how do we get the money? Mm. And yeah. everyone is looking at how do they benefit from someone else's uh, peril.
Mm. I mean, you can take the housing. <coughs> you know, you can you can take anything in this country, it's and money. it's yeah, all it's about right. money. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is no different. Okay, look, we we've discussed this whole piece of them. I guess it's, it's it's it will be it will be a continued discussion <laughs> yeah for quite some time mm. and um uh, so we've got given a little input here for you and hopefully you'll have that discussion at home I and mean, i think it's a good thing and if you can make it inclusive i mean invite your neighbors you know what i mean it's a very diverse neighborhood nowadays and why not have that discussion and if you got a feeling let it out on the table that's the only way you can solve it because in all due respect we're all creatures of our exposure mm -hmm. and most of us don't buy the newspaper mm. right a lot of us don't look at the news <laughs> Mm. None of us don't listen to the radio. I mean, that's why I, I liked it, the idea that one thing I liked about uh, Reverend Sharpton, at least he's on a black radio station that people at least li listen to after the, the music. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good, if you will. So I think those kind of things are, are going to happen. Now, naturally, what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to take a short break here. And when we get back, we're going to come up with our, another local issue talking about the race. I'm going to let Bob lead in on that one. Mm -hmm. he, he's very familiar with that piece aspect of it. So we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, uh, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host here, and, and uh, we're talking about the Turan. Well, we're talking about race and and, and, and what role did race racism play in, in what we're talking in our discussion. We're having discussions all daily, for that matter. But I think it's a good thing. We're finally, we're finally getting to the point. We're talking about it, and it seems as though it touches everything. But the bottom line is that a lot of things are happening. Things are changing. We're very progressive, like Bob would says. And we're a capitalist society. That's the first time I've heard the word capitalism as opposed to racism. <laughs> 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 it's all about the money, Bob That's said. Right. Okay. So anyway, uh, we're going to continue this discussion. <coughs> and um, uh, there's another, another thing from a local standpoint. It says racism rears up in Longshore standoff. That was a very interesting piece. And, um, and, and it's right in the Portland metropolitan area. And we're going to discuss that a little bit. But before I get into that, by the way, we're going to open up the lines here. In about another 15 minutes, we're going to have this discussion. But I'm going to give Matt an opportunity to chat a little bit about uh, uh, his, uh, his, his uh, program that he's going to be, the, the coverage project, right? Let me see, what is it? Convergence. Convergence Project. Yeah, yeah okay. the Northwest Convergence Project. And in all due respect, and what I see in it is that, again, it's going to be a continuation talking about and discussing, if you will, the issues to resolve some of the problems that we're talking about right now mm -hmm. because we need to talk the more mm -hmm. the more we communicate the far better we're going to be mm -hmm. it's not going to change That's i mean right. we're just going to break down we're breaking down the percentage if you will sure of involvement aspect of it we maybe start out 100 percent to raise it now all of a sudden we may what about 70 60 50 what, what's the, what's the percent what, what number would you pick 60 70 in terms of racism now racism uh -huh. <laughs> 90 oh my oh, john what do you say <laughs> 
50, 50. 50. Okay, what do you say, man? <laughs> Probably about 50. Okay, fine. On that particular note, then, lost. talk a little bit about what you're trying to do, man, in regards to this program. And when is this going to happen? Just, just break it down to us. This real is going to happen on August the 31st. It's August called 31st. the Northwest Convergence Project. Okay. What it is is that we're looking to have people in the Pacific Northwest begin. It's not going to be an overnight thing that you change. I mean, uh, it's something that you have to work toward. Mm -hmm. And what we all end up doing, as far as long as I have known, is we talk about it. But we're not doing anything to change, change the landscape. Uh, last hired, first fired. Who is that, who's that, who, who is that about? That's about us. You know, uh, not able, they, but it's a universal they're lazy. Thing, yeah. You know, all those things. And the moment one person demonstrates that, it become a racial thing versus that person you know we look at other people as a person they look at us as a whole body as a, one of us is the whole body and that's has to change okay. and so how do we go about doing that okay that's, that's the, the race question. piece on that now what if what if he was a gay person what, what if the person was gay and a white male would we have the same would, would, would we also classify that as racism john uh that would be um I guess sexism, I guess, but it's it's the uh, an ism and. But it's and a male. So it's, a it's still it's still because they're quote not normal oh, quote okay. see okay. because they're not in the the the, the box the, in in <laughs> in the circle you know of of, of the uh, what is normal see so you have something that's different yep. and and in fact the deal is the uh, uh, when I was a lieutenant in the National Guard and the uh, they were doing the equal rights uh, race relations thing. I showed up for a, for a Saturday drill, and we did the inspection, and then we did the. Uh, they took us in for a movie, on, and they used this uh, study from Ohio, in a grade school, and they were they're all white. So what did they make the difference on? Blue eyes and and brown eyes, hmm. and the blue eyed people were better than brown eyed people. See? Hmm. So. After the movie was shown, I had an officer's call. Then I walked into the shop office because I was the executive officer, shop officer. So I walked in and the warrant officer in charge with his big blue eyes, he sa says, Lieutenant, don't you feel a little odd? And I looked out there, there's 20 guys, 40 blue eyes that, looking at me like the Pacific Ocean had washed into the room. And I says, oh, I see what's going on here. You didn't have blue eyes. Yeah. I says, uh, you all know why people got brown eyes because they're full of the hair. And I said, yeah, yes sir, yes sir. Okay, all right. Said, you know why people got blue eyes? Because they're so busy spreading, it never collects above here. Okay. okay. And the warrant officer says, sir, right. that's cold. And I says, that's true. And I laugh. <laughs> what about when a, eventually it'll probably happen, what about the first woman president? Would that be would that be considered racism? Uh, would they be jumping on her on that end of it, or would, what would it be? Uh, At some point, we're going to get above this, and we're going to judge people based on their actions. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know how or when it's going to happen, but it's got to happen. You think in your point. lifetime? You think in your lifetime? I hope so. Okay. I intend to live for another fifty years. Oh, though. Matt, I'm, I'm, I'm a real I believe. Don't do that, you know, uh, don't do that. you know, I mean, as I'm a minister of reincarnation, yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, going to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a whole other message. Well, yeah, 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 but yeah, um, okay. but uh, I would say that, um, that in, you know, we've taken some, some good steps, but I agree, we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. But the way forward is our discussions, what we're doing, uh, is more inclusion is allowing for us to be more honest and, and speak openly. Right. And by the way, not only uh, black and white, but with those of us who are black, uh, who have different opinions as well. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to, just like what you two do, mm -hmm. sit down and have real discussions mm -hmm. and not be afraid to, to go certain places, mm -hmm. you know. And, and don't um, get angry. There you go. You know, that's the one thing that, that deter that breaks down the whole dynamics of the conversation there you go. is when one person get angry over the issue. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to articulate your side. Mm -hmm. There you go. You know, win the war with words. Mm -hmm. But see, to me, even as we've been discussing, even if there's a different of, difference of opinion, I don't consider it a war. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. number one, 
I am open to hearing what you have to say. Yeah, right, right. Okay. But a lot of times I found others are not willing to hear right. what I have to say. And so therefore I have to make sure that I do keep myself in check because I do I have come to this place from a different experience than other people. Mm -hmm. So um, how I'm seeing it now, at least for me, because I'm maybe the youngest one here. What was that? I said I may be the youngest this one here. This is my second time around anyways. So. Okay. <laughs> but I'm just saying this, that, 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 um, that we're in this interesting direction as Americans right now. We can actually get to the content of character, right. I believe, in mm -hmm. 30 years. 30 years. But it does mean that for all of us we have to take some real steps and actually go places that we don't want to go why so long because it took close to 250 years in regard to racism and you cannot knock that out in and a again. very quick time <laughs> mm -hmm. so i would say from the time of when the civil rights thing got started that about a, you, you know it usually takes a generation for something to be removed out of a people. So mm -hmm. generation, biblically to me, is about 70 years. Mm -hmm. So well, You know, I, I like that. I asked you about what time, but imagine right after the Civil War, had Lincoln lived, because mm -hmm. there were a lot of things that were on the table, you know, mm -hmm. voting rights mm -hmm. of women and, and integrating the military during that particular time. There was a whole bunch of stuff right. on the table. And then the moment he was shot, if you will, it just changed things. They went right back to zero, even though there was a, a, a war between the states and we still have the war between the states today. Sure. You know, and it's unfortunate. So the other thing I was going to ask you about, what about our school system? I mean, mm -hmm. I remember when I was going to school, this was not in the textbooks. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in my class. I mean, you know, i.e. in, in this, this um, inclusiveness type deal. Talking oh, no. About, talking about our history. And our, that's why I, I like the idea of the calendar aspect of it. That history was there. Mm -hmm. It's there today. Mm -hmm. But there's this refusal of putting it in the classroom. Sure. Well, one of the things is that... The, was, was, what about our classroom? Well, the, the education industrial complex, I think, is a great big criminal enterprise. <laughs> and the deal is, because look at... How do we change it, John? Well, we need to get new people on, on the school boards. And, and, and the thing is that the, uh, they don't want to teach history. They don't want people to have an appreciation of history. Because a lot of these, there's some organizations, they... They make it by saying how bad things are, but not the fact that things have improved. It's and they, the they want the issue, because the issue brings money. Solutions, money goes away. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. and, it's, and I've watched some of these things. It's almost like two opposing organi organizations and ideas, and they're getting ready for a battle. And it's almost like they check the other guy's bank account so that they don't run them out of business. Because I've been in some of these where We've just about won, and the victory slides away. Are the dealers you just about got run over, and the other guy side slacks, slacks off? Yeah. You know, it's like when um, Bob Dole was running against uh, Bill Clinton. It got into September, and he slacked off. I saw it where it slacked off. I says Clinton's going to re get reelected because they're not giving the push. Mm -hmm. You know, the fix is in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you may mention about the fact. When you, when you look at any media today, especially media, news media, mm -hmm. information media, it's all negative. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you don't pick it up unless it's negative. Sure, of course. You can't say nothing nice about that. You, you maybe <coughs> like in, in the Sunday paper, the obituaries, and that, that's, the, that's the only thing I, I, I just... <laughs> Go I to the grocery <laughs> store and try and check out. Everything's a tabloid, mm -hmm. you know, and the reason for it is we have become this catch-all society. It's a culture. We're going to catch you at yeah. this. We're going to yeah. catch you at that. It's not, it, when I was growing up, I remember I talked to my sons. I said, when I used to watch movies, mm -hmm. The Red Rider and Little Beaver, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and someone would get shot and fall off the horse, but you didn't see any blood. Mm -hmm. You know, today is guts and, is guts and gore. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to have the blood, the, the messier, the better. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and but it's about the money. Buddy. Our children, our children see this. And they become hardened. Mm -hmm. And we are beginning to have children that are so hard, they don't care about us. 
you know, remember when we didn't put our grandparents but, but, in a but, nursing home, but the we parents, took care of them. But now we're ready to run them, run, yeah. get get rid of them as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah. You know, all of these things, it's a reason for all of these But it's things. generation after generation after generation. You know, the right. parents are the one that owns the movie houses, that puts the thing together. You know, now we got this whole business about sex going on the, on the internet, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're doing all this piece. People are ready to go to work and they, they turn it, turn on. Turn on the computer and go right to the deal. You know, I was thinking, you were saying your kids, but can I take a step further? Mm -hmm. Your grandkids. Yes. Yep. Yep. Your great-grandkids. Yep. Mm -hmm. And your great-great-grandkids yep. right now. All of those, those next three are all in trouble right now. Yep. Right. And, and so, sorry. What are we doing about it? What are we doing about it? Well. And what are we going to do about it? Matt, as a symposium, now maybe I'm bringing out too many things. Yeah, I'm not really trying to go into the symposium, but I will say this much. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I believe it starts here, right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I yeah. believe this is where change happens, right now. Mm -hmm. Not in our federal government, mm -hmm. not in our state government, not with politicians, with everyday people like us. This is where change begins. Okay, okay. Is that all right to say that? It is. But okay. how do we get us together? Well, the first thing, a, a, good, a good example of, of IE, us communicating or whatever, we didn't receive a call on this <laughs> issue. Yeah. Not a call. Mm hmm Okay? And that, that, again, I will say again to you who are looking at this, this particular program, hey, get together with some folks. Get together with your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Whether they white, black, whatever, but get together with that person and, and, and just talk talk about these issues because otherwise you need to know your neighbors too. That's the we constantly talking about. That it takes a village to raise a child. Mm. That's everybody, not mm -hmm. just black. I mean, across the board, if you will. Mm -hmm. And neighbors are not neighbors anymore today. Right. Mm -hmm. People just hooked up. You know, we don't have the neighborly deal. And I'm saying to you now, no one call. Well, one thing is, but I got about, 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 about a half a minute. Kids real, real quick. You know. We're here, we're talking, you know. If we were 15 years old, we'd be on our little Blackberries or something texting each other. Because yeah, yeah. I've been in restaurants, I've seen people, you know, kids texting, they're texting each other across the street, not yeah. across the table, not right. even talking to each other right. across the table. Communicate, folks. Well, this is it. We've spent an hour, and uh, maybe, maybe you're already in discussion, if you will, uh, the, the, talking about these issues. Uh, you didn't call in, so, so consequently it might have been too complicated. So maybe we need to do this again, right, guys? All right. Or if not that, join, join Matt at his symposium. I think that's, a, that's another way, if you will, of getting in those discussions, if you will. I think Bob's going to be there. I will be there. John, you'll probably be there, I hope Bob will be there. <laughs> okay, good. Well, <laughs> folks, thank you very much for being, being with us. And uh, as usual, enjoy your evening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Amen.